What percentage of young people are actually getting their news from TikTok? I mean, there have been studies done about this. I mean, you know, my only source is my 19-year-old son <laughs> and who tells me that literally a majority, the majority of his friends get their content and information from TikTok or maybe certain news apps and outlets, but none of them watch traditional media outlets like we did. And a lot of them will also say that there is a younger part of that generation that is now waking up to kind of what's going on and they're going to podcasts. Yes. So they're going to like the Tucker Carlson's, the Joe Rogan's, and they're listening and paying attention. And a lot of them are beginning to think. Right. It's almost as if a lot of them are beginning to wake up that, hey, wait a second, there's something really off here. But I think it's also to what you pointed out, Dr. Phil, is that people are seeking like-minded content. Yeah. I'm going to find things that align with my ideology, my belief system, even though that ideology may be young and fresh and not fully formed. I've heard things from my parents. I've heard things from my peers. This seems to align. And they're not necessarily getting the full story or getting another side to, you know, have some critical thoughts and to be able to debate and analyze coming from a place of logic and information and not emotion. And that's something that we talk about as well is just how emotionally triggered and sensitive people are when it comes to news and information. And you you can't have I mean, I remember growing up, I'm a child of the 70s and the 80s. I remember, people would have people of both sides of the aisle would have conversations Conversation. about politics have different stances. You would agree to disagree. But I mean, these days you lose friends if you're yeah. not politically aligned. Yeah. And and that's got to change. The emotionality has to get out of it. It can't be, you know, I, I just why do you feel that? Why do you think that way? Well, that's just how I, I feel. feel. Well, we've moved to an autonomous society where there's no absolute truth anymore. The people have been taught and younger people have been taught well, your truth is what you feel. If you feel it, that's your truth. So now we don't have an absolute truth anymore. We have truth that changes and people are allowed to make up their own truth. Yes, based on emotionality. Columbia Review put out a study on March 15th of 2024. It was written by Joseph Cameron. He said that roughly a third of Americans aged 18 to 29 regularly get their news from TikTok. And the Pew Research Center found in late 2023 survey, nearly half of all TikTok users say they regularly get news from the app. And Twitter is another one. I mean, you can just look at it. A third of U.S. adults under 30 now regularly get news from TikTok, which is not vetted in any and way. You can put way. anything on Absolutely. there. There's no editorial at all. There's mm -hmm. no vetting. It can say anything in the world. That's right. I've seen things in the last few weeks, outrageous headlines that people would put on there, bold statements that weren't true, mm -hmm. that were picked up and just spread like wildfire. You know that old saying that a lie spreads like six times faster yeah, than, than the truth? truth? That's right. There's actually been a study about that which confirms that that's true. And why? Because a lie is very tight. It's very succinct because for something to be true, it has to include a lot of details. Mm -hmm. And, you know, lies are easy to repeat because they don't require to include details and qualifiers. Right. You just say whatever you want to say and it travels fast. It's quick. It's yep. easy to repeat. Because it plays on emotion. Yeah. And here's the study right here. Is. Study on Twitter, false news travels faster than true stories. Exactly right. Research project finds humans, not bots, are primarily responsible for the spread of misleading information. This was a study done at MIT, and I had this in my book, We've Got Issues. We found that falsehoods diffuse significantly faster, deeper, and more broadly than the truth in all categories of information. And in some cases by an order of magnitude. So if you're not checking and lies get up, they spread fast and people have misinformation. Right. And so they just treat it as the truth. And they stand by it. They'll defend it. So why did you get back into broadcasting? You both got out <laughs> yeah. and you both got back in. Why? Well, because there was somebody by the name of Dr. Gosh. Phil who was starting this network who wanted to produce and present information that was fact-based and down the middle. And honestly, that's the first time I have heard that in a very, long, a very time. long time. It was a breath of fresh air when I heard that, because I my plan was never to go back in the studio ever, to never. do broadcast news. I ever, would, never, you, ever, ever. Never, <laughs> ever. You couldn't have paid me point. enough money to go back into that. And so yeah. when we heard that you were committed to telling the truth, both sides accurately, truthfully, mm -hmm. 
so that people can make their own decisions. I never thought that I would even hear someone say that again. Me either. And I will also add this to uh, people here know, the audience doesn't know, but your COO of news, Joel Cheatwood, is yeah. somebody that I admire deeply. Yeah. Um, I've known him since 1994. He tried to hire me when he was at WSVN in Miami. And when I was contacted by him and we sat in that office and we talked right. for a good hour, you know, and I heard his logic and his laser-like precision in the way he thinks, his clarity, and, and he will just think things and say things. And, and you catch yourself, and you think, why didn't I think of that angle? <laughs> That's what Joel does. Yeah. But he has such great news judgment. And I thought, all right, you know, here's Dr. Phil starting this network with this belief system. Here's the COO of news who's in perfect al alignment. It felt like congruence for me. And that's not something you feel all the time in this business. No. Yeah. When Joel called me, I had spoken with him in 2021 about doing another project. And at that time, I was starting my nonprofit and I didn't feel like that was the right time for me to get distracted in something else. When he called me about this, he said, Fanchon, I know this is perfect for you. And I came in, I sat with him, I listened to him, mm -hmm. and it almost sounded too good to be true. And I tell this story, I went, I left. I did not tell my parents, I told no one. I immediately prayed. And I said, God, is this, if this is something that you're bringing to me and you give me the green light to do this, I'm gonna put my whole heart into this because I wanted to make sure that if I was going to align with anyone, it was gonna be based on integrity, credibility, values, and making sure that we put out a message because ultimately we're in a fight. Your book says that we are in a fight for the soul of this country. And I think a lot of people do not realize how serious that is and at what point we are at. We don't have much time if we're going to save the soul of this country and protect our children, protect the legacy and protect the freedoms and the foundation of this country. Yeah, I feel very strongly about that. And I don't think anybody can be a non-combatant because not choosing is a choice. You can yes. say, well, I don't yeah. want to get involved. Well, we're all involved because we're all yeah. part of this country. You can't not take a position. And I do take a position. And I want everybody at this network to take a position. And that position is we follow the facts. There aren't versions of the truth. No. There aren't versions of the truth, and you can't pick your truth based on where your advertising dollars come from. You can't pick your truth based on how you feel. I mean, I, I've said it before. People tell me, well, I feel this way or I feel that way. I don't care how you feel. I barely care how I feel. <laughs> what matters is what are the facts Right. You need to look at the facts and make your decisions based on the facts. I mean, think about it in terms of life situations. If you were at the airport and there was a guy there with an airplane and he said, would you like to go for a ride? What would you say? Well, I've been a pilot since I was 16, 17 years old. I would look around and say, does this guy know what he's doing? Right. Is, is he, is he a good pilot? <laughs> And if the facts were he had crashed nine of the last 10 times he had taken off, I would want to know those facts. It yeah. doesn't matter how I felt about flying. I would want to know if this guy crashes nine out of 10 times, I'm going to pass. Mm -hmm. If this guy's been out there forever and he's a safe pilot and he's done a thousand flights and he always comes back in one piece and his airplane looks pretty good— Everybody gives him a good report. That's good information. I need to know that. People need to check facts. 